what you were doing when you saw this. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Ah, continue the dream, but gonna have to do it aboard another vessel. Yes, the weather was a bit iffy today, but when launch time came, which was just about 90 minutes ago, skies were fair, the crowds were huge, emotions were sky high today, and what they were calling a sentimental journey into history, as NASA was calling it. It got off to a well, pretty good start, as you see there, but there was a tiny hiccup that stopped the countdown clock at 31 seconds. But after that, it was all good. Now, moments from now, NASA will brief us all on Atlantis' eight-minute trip into orbit and its pursuit of the International Space Station, where it'll drop off supplies and come back to Earth 12 days from now. That will be on July 20th, which will be the 42nd anniversary of man's first steps on the moon. Since the first shuttle took off in April of 1981, five orbiters have flown 135 missions with 359 crew members. The 135th and final mission has four crew members, the fewest we've seen in years. The shuttle fleet has traveled more than half a billion miles, and that number grows as we speak. Let's go now to the Kennedy Space Center, to our guy, John Zarella, also meteorologist uh, Chad Myers, who was there as well. You know, Chad was there to keep an eye on the skies. It didn't turn out uh, like we thought it might. So we'll check in with, with Chad here in a second. But, John, to you, you have been to a number of these launches. You have seen these yeah. up close and personal. How did this one feel different? Uh, first, you know, I think I've traveled 500 billion, million <laughs> miles just up and back from South Florida to the Kennedy Space Center over the last, uh, you know, 25 years or so. Uh, it, it was certainly different. There's no question about it, TJ. When you've seen, uh, you know, as many as I have, they're all unique. They're all special. But then when you realize that in all those other times that I've seen them, I've known there's another one coming down the road. Yeah. Uh, and now, you know, that's it. There will not be any any more launches of space shuttles from the Kennedy Space Center, and and that you know is one of those things that just sits there and it kind of, you know, sits in 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 your in the pit of your stomach, you know. And and you were mentioning at uh, 31 seconds, uh, they actually stopped the countdown because there was a concern uh, a sensor had failed. They weren't sure that a vent arm had actually retracted. They got a visual look at it, and they were able to go ahead and. Uh, pick up the count uh, again, but you know, right before liftoff, before they lifted off, uh, there was an exchange uh, between the launch director and Christopher Ferguson, the commander, and uh, here's what Chris Ferguson said just before launch about this special day. The shuttle's always going to be a reflection of what a great nation can do when it dares to be bold and commits to follow through. We're not ending the journey today, Mike. We're completing a chapter of a journey that will never end. You and the thousands of men and women who gave their hearts, souls, and their lives for the cause of exploration have rewritten history. Let's light this fire one more time, Mike, and witness this great nation at its best. The crew of Atlantis is ready for launch. You know, until today, there was not really any question that the United States was in the space business with the shuttles, that iconic flying machine that it is. Uh, but now, you know, there's still some real questions down the road as to, uh, you know, the United States' future in space. You have NASA insists it's going to continue forward, going outward. Uh, but, you know, money, budgets, uh, the, the national will, it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting ride for the next five to ten years to see where NASA is now that the space shuttle is retiring. TJ? Uh, and, John, tell us as well, you said that uh, yeah. that that hiccup at 31 seconds during the countdown, yeah. but after that, uh, it's all good? Yeah, all good. It uh, it was a, it was smooth, and I'm sure the uh, the mission management team uh, in this uh, this briefing will discuss that that hiccup, uh, and uh, and then they'll be just sitting there. I am sure they will be grinning ear to ear that they got this vehicle off the ground on time uh, with the four crew members on the way to the International Space Station. A rendezvous on uh, on Sunday morning. They're delivering thousands of pounds of supplies, and then they're going to be taking back some stuff when they come back to Earth. Stuff to it's no longer needed uh, up on the space station. So, uh, you know, still uh, 12 long days ahead, a lot of work for the uh, for the crew on board Atlantis before they, uh, they make, uh, uh, you know, a return here. You know what's going to be interesting, TJ, yeah. is that when they come back here, 
NASA is planning at this point, once Ferguson calls, we'll stop, shuttle lands on the runway, they safe the vehicle, they're going to allow the thousands of space workers here who are here to go out there, to touch the vehicle, to be right out there on the runway, uh, you know, to say goodbye one last time to uh, this iconic flying machine. All right, well, well, John, you stay there with me. Let me bring in Chad Myers, who was keeping a close sure. eye on the weather for us. Chad, we were told only a 30% chance uh, that the weather would allow. Yes. So did we just get a lucky break right around launch time, or did things kind of, kind of change during the day for the weather? <laughs> No, we got pretty lucky around launch time because right now we would be back in condition red. We were red all morning long until about 1030. It greened up for a brief moment and then some clouds rolled back in and they were concerned about the re-land. If it had to be the emergency landing, they didn't have enough clearance, didn't have enough ceiling for this thing to land on the runway that's here at Cape Canaveral. So this is what we had during the launch right there. Beautiful skies, way high. We had a, we we lost the shuttle after about about 30 seconds worth of flight. We lost it. But now this is what we have over here. Take a look at this. Here's the sky that we're looking at. With that sky, TJ, it, we would be red again because you can't fly through cumulus clouds. You can't fly through anything that's thicker than about 4,500 feet. And that's because you can't get water in those tiles or in the cracks between those tiles because all of a sudden if you fly through rain or if you fly through a cumulus cloud that has water in it you wet down the shuttle a second later the shuttle is 70 degrees below zero and you don't want that water to freeze in between the tiles obviously you know what happens to potholes in minnesota when it's freeze thaw freeze thaw you can't do that to a shuttle uh too important to keep those tiles on the shuttle you don't want potholes in your shuttle that's for sure we're back to what we would be red so we literally we had a condition green for about 40 minutes that window was big enough and right in time for the shuttle to take off today and chad same kind of rules apply weather standards for the landing that's coming in 12 days? A little bit even, um, I would even say uh, a little bit more um, conditional, I would say, on the rain factor because it's a bigger circle. Right now, all we had to do is shoot this thing straight up. When we land this thing, it has to be very dry. You can't have any showers around it. Think of a dry day in Florida in the summertime. It don't happen very often, really. I mean, you, got, you have to go out to Edwards. Sometimes you have to go to, you have to go one time to White Sands. But you cannot fly the shuttle because it's screaming hot. Uh, thousands of degrees, you can't fly that back through a rain shower. So the criteria even a little bit um, more tense, a little bit uh, harder to get through to land this thing back here at Kennedy. But they have a, a big time. The, 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 you know, they're, they're going to have a big time party when this thing finally does come back here. All right, Chad Myers, we appreciate that break. Down. Good explanation there for us, Chad. Good to see you as always, and thanks as well to our John Zarella. Uh, it's seven minutes, eight minutes now past the hour. Our sound effect is the, the launch of the space shuttle Atlantis. It's a journey shaped by triumph and tragedy, defined by decades of innovation, exploration, and discovery. Squad for main engine start. We have main engine start. That's 30 years ago. Thousands gathered at Kennedy Space Center to watch Columbia, the first shuttle, launch into history. One, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Well, today, it's estimated almost a million people came to witness the end with Atlantis. Our Carol Costello was there for the launch with the crowd. Carol, you help us. Uh, did it feel like a million people? I know it's empty there now. People have cleared out. But did it feel like about a million people were there earlier today? TJ, it did feel like a million people were here. It was amazing. I'll tell you what those million people are doing right now. They're driving. Take a look at Route 528. That's everybody returning from Cape Canaveral back to their hotels, back to their airports to go home for the day. But I am telling you, TJ, just to be here, and this is just alongside the road off 528, you can see it. I mean, look that way. You can see, you can see the water and clear over there in the distance. That was where um, the space shuttle took off from the very moment it did. Actually, we have some video to show you of the very moment it took off. People were chanting, USA, USA. They were cheering. I'm telling you, it brought a tear to your eye. Look. Oh, 
Okay, TJ, you had to admit that was pretty darn cool, and it was emotional. Two people are left on this little slice of beach off of 528. That would be Nate and John. You guys actually camped out overnight to see this thing. Was it worth it? Definitely. It was definitely worth it. The rain and the, and the wind last night was kind of difficult, but it was definitely worth it this morning after seeing it go up. So, so when you saw the flame shooting out of the rocket, what went through your mind? Oh, it was amazing. I, I mean, I was standing on top of the car screaming and yelling, and I, I was almost overtaken with emotion. It was, it was just awesome. So, so, Nate, when people started chanting USA, USA, what went through your mind? Oh, it was just pride. I mean, you know, I'm really proud to be part of this country. It's the best place to live in the world, and uh, wouldn't want to live anywhere else. <laughs> Where else can you see things like this and just pull up on the side of the road, you know? But this is the last shuttle launch, the last shuttle that you will ever see, probably in your lifetime, taking off. So it's kind of what, bittersweet, sad? What goes through your mind when you think about it like that? Well, I'm, I'm really grateful to have experienced it. And, you know, I have, I have a sense of hope that, uh, that it won't be the last. Uh, we've made a deal that next time a manned launch does go up, which could be in the future, we'll be here for it, so. Oh, that's, so you'll be in a tent in the rain, sleeping overnight? <laughs> Maybe we'll plan it a little further ahead in advance. <laughs> Maybe. Thank you for waiting around. We really appreciate it. So there you have it, TJ. It was a beautiful moment, a bittersweet moment, especially for this entire area, because if you think of towns like Titusville, which is, which is about 15 miles up the road near Cape Canaveral, that's where a lot of NASA employees work. 15,000 people will be laid off because this is the last shuttle launch. So the moment for people who live here, who work here, bittersweet. They made a lot of money, that, you know, today because of the shuttle launch, but this is the last time. Well, they will come up with the next big thing down there for the folks in Florida. Carol Costello, we appreciate that. Glad those hey, guys were able to stick around. John, yes, they will. They'll be there. <laughs> Glad a couple guys stuck around there as well. Uh, Carol, good to see you as always. Thanks so much.